In this video, let's go through the Vulkan movies tutorial. So I'm going to follow the instructions from the start. I already have Node, NPM, and Meteor, so I can skip that, but I'm going to go ahead and clone the Vulkan repo. Cloning. So what I'm doing here is getting all the Vulkan code locally. Um, this is useful for two reasons. First, of course, to run Vulkan, but also having the code locally is very good if you want to le just learn from the code or maybe even uh, submit a pull request to improve something uh, one day. So, okay, I have my code. I'm going to go ahead and open my text editor. And uh, let's take a quick look. So there's a bunch of files which you can pretty much ignore for now. Uh, what's interesting is actually the contents of the packages directory. So in Vulkan, one uh, package, one directory like this is more or less equal to one feature. So there's one package to handle uh, forms, one to handle uh, emails, and so on. And uh, the first uh, four packages we have here are just various examples of what you can do with Vulkan. And today uh, we're going to go through the code for the example movies package. So let's go back to our uh, tutorial, which is actually here, and see what it says. Okay, so. Uh, there's an overview of the packages we need, so uh, let's just double check. So to see which packages are enabled, because of course we don't need all of that just to begin with. So you can click here in dot meteor uh, slash packages, and so that this means a, a comment. So this is commented out. So what's not commented out is Vulcan Core, which makes sense. Vulcan internal, internationalization, uh, English US, which contains the basic English strings, accounts password, which is a Meteor package used to um, log in with an email and password, and then example movies, which is the example we're uh, working on. So uh, for this tutorial, we're going to start from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out the movies example. Well, actually, before I do that, let's let's just see uh, if we can run our app. So um, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and run the Meteor command. So the first time you run the app, it might take a little bit to um, to get started. Oh, so this is a very common problem. We forgot to npm install. So um, Vulkan depends on a lot of npm packages, which will not be installed automatically. So you have to run this command beforehand. Uh, otherwise, basically nothing will work. So just run npm install and wait a little bit. OK, so npm install is done. Let's try Meteor once more. So it says app running at localhost 3000. We can ignore the other warnings for now. So let's see what we get. So we have our list of movies. We can load more movies. Um, and we can uh, sign up. my email, insert a new document, um, and yep, our app works. So now let's uh, follow the tutorial to see how to recreate all these cool features. So uh, the first step in our tutorial is creating a new package to hold our code. And you can see the, the structure 
uh, of the package right here. So we'll have uh, my package directory, and then inside this uh, lib directory, and also a package.js file. So um, let, let's go ahead and create this. So we'll, uh, we'll comment out movies, and we'll create our own package right here. Package.js, lib, and um, you can cheat by looking at the, the movies uh, package just to get the right structure. Components, modules. And by the way, uh, you don't have to use this directory structure, but it's just a, a convention. Uh, we have so that all Vulkan packages kind of look and, and work the same. So uh, we have our package.js file, so what should we put in there? Well, here's a, a template you can use. My, my package, uh, it depends on core forms accounts, um, and it's adding a couple of files. So let's go ahead and create these. Um, so there's a bootstrap style sheet. Um, which we'll copy from right here. Uh, and there's a main.js and uh, main.js in server and client, so let's create those. Okay, we can save and we can uh, also add our new package right here. So. This should do a trick because this uh, this is how we named our package, and you can also do meteor add, and then my package uh, in the command line. It's the same thing as adding it in your packages file. Okay. So um, what else do we have? So in uh, client main and server main, we're gonna import some modules from index.js. So we can also do that. Import modules, import modules, and now index.js will be uh, the place where we uh, aggregate all our code. So uh, basically, client contains the client code, server the client the server code, but a lot of code will be shared between both client and server, and that's uh, what we put in modules. So uh, let, let's check what we have actually. Uh, we don't really have anything because you know our package is empty, uh, but you know it's now loading. So uh, we do want to show something. So let's create a component. So I'm going to paste this and create a new components directory inside lib. We've done that. Add the movies directory inside, uh, and then inside component movies, add a new file containing a movies list component. So let's let's do just that. So components movies, new file, movies, list.jsx. Um, okay, hello world. Let's, so th this won't work right away because we haven't uh, defined a route. So this is actually the next step. We want to create a route so that uh, the app knows to show our component when we hit the the root path of the app. So I'm going to copy this and create a new route.js file inside modules. So it's inside modules, meaning uh, it will be visible by both client and server. And then we also need to import it in here. Um, okay, let's see if we get anything. Yep, yeah, hello world. So we know we have a route. Uh, now the next step is displaying some data. So this is where the schema comes in. Basically, uh, we want to have a movies collection. Uh, in other words, you know, a collection where you store data for certain types. We want a place to store our movies, documents, and the collection will be defined by a schema. 
So this is our schema. Let me copy this and then paste it in schema.js inside modules slash movies. So um, I'm going to create a, a new subdirectory just to uh, isolate everything that's related or specific to movies because the, the routes could be, you know, any any routes if I had movies and users and some other kinds of, of pages in my app, uh, all the routes would be the same, but schema is really specific to you know, the movies. So uh, what's in a movie schema? There's an ID created at timestamp, user ID, the ID of the user who created the movie, and then name, year, and review. And then I can export all of this. Now the question is where do I uh, import it from? So let's go back. And uh, we're going to set up a collection this time. So this was the schema, and now we use that schema to initialize the collection. So movies and then new file collection.js. So we are importing our schema. We're also importing create collection, which is a utility to create a collection using a collection name, movies, uh, a type name, in other words, the name of the GraphQL type of a single document, and then the schema we just defined. So now uh, we are exporting this. We just need to uh, import it. So we're going to say import movies from and movies collection JS. Okay, and uh, we're gonna also do export export default movies. Um, so this way we can access our collection uh, if we want to. Well, actually, actually, it's probably not needed, but we'll see what the tutorial says. Okay. Um, oh, we now have a functional GraphQL schema. Huh. So let's do what the tutorial says, which is, so let, let me get back in my directory. Open the Meteor shell and then check out what our schema looks like. And we do have a schema actually. Huh. So this is what uh, Vulkan does for you. It will, well, let me just clean it up a little bit. It will generate the GraphQL schema from um, your um, JSON, simple schema, schema we just defined. So here we go, type movie, um, type user, and so on. So that's that works, great. Let's close this and go back to our tutorial. So we have a schema, but we can't query for document yet because we don't have a query resolver. So let's fix this new resolvers.js file inside module movies. Okay, um, so what do we have here? We have a resolver named list. Um, or actually, the role, the resolver's role is list. The name is movies list. And the resolver's contents, what it actually does is it takes in arguments, um, but we don't really care about the arguments. So really all it does is return all the movies it can find in our database to uh, whoever is making the GraphQL query. So we're going to take uh, these resolvers and then go back to our collection, import, import, and uh, add the resolvers to create collection. Okay, good. Um, so yeah, we need some data to try out our new query. So here I have some seed code. And like it says here, we don't want to import this on the client, just on the server, because the server is the one that can actually uh, perform database operations, such as creating new documents. So uh, server c.js, and then let's import this. 
save Ah, uh, so we have uh, an error here. Cannot find modules collection. I'm doing this live, so um, there's bound to be a few uh, problems. All right, there's a typo here. It should be module movies collection JS. So let's go back, see what we have. Okay, we still have our hello world, but now we can use something called graphical which is a, a really handy tool to query your Graph, GraphQL API. So we're going to paste in this query and run it. And there we go, we have the results. Now, uh, the cool thing about GraphQL is that you can ask for the data you want. So if I just ask for created it, that's what I get. But I can also ask for name, uh, review. It will even autofill the, the name of the properties for you. Uh, altogether, GraphQL is a really cool tool and a really great addition to uh, to your tool belt. Okay, so uh, the question now is how do we show this in our app? Um, and before we do that, we're gonna make the resolver a bit more advanced. Um, in other words, it's gonna handle pagination. So let's uh, go ahead and paste this. Um, this time you see it's using a terms argument and that's where the pagination will come from. So, you know, there will be a terms.limit uh, variable and based on that, we'll know how many movies to show. Uh, so now we want to know how to display all that data in our app. So let's create a new movies item component. Component movies movies item okay um and we'll going we're going to go ahead and import this from movies list so i'm gonna copy all that so there, there's quite a few things going on here um like i said we're importing movies item to show all our movies uh, but you'll see that there's lots of new uh, props that we have access to. Results, current user, loading, load more, count, total count. And they come from these two higher order components, with list and with current user. So a higher order component is a function you can call on a component to pass it some props. This is very handy because, for example, uh, with current user can pass the current user and with list can pass a list of documents based on a couple options, which uh, said options are defined right here. A collection, which is movies, that's where we want to load the data from. Uh, a fragment name, so we're going to define that right uh, in, in a minute. And then a limit, how many movies we want to show. And based on these three things, we're going to have um, all these props passed to us, which enables us to, you know, tell if the, the component should show a loading state, if not, you know, um, the results uh, and show how many uh, items are loaded and so on. Uh, so now we do need the, the fragment, which uh, is the piece of code that determines which fields are sh uh, re requested. So earlier, earlier in GraphQL or graphical, sorry, I, I show you, you can add and remove uh, field names, and that's what the fragment does. So going to, once again, create a new fragment uh, JS file right here, and register a new fragment. Uh, it will be on type movie, because that's what we want to display. It will, it will have an ID, created that, user ID, user name, year review, all that good stuff. So um, let's go ahead and import this from our collection file. Okay, uh, fragment.js, and let's see if this works. Re refresh, and it does work. So two things, not only do we have our data, but our pagination also works. Uh, why? Because if we go back to movies list, uh, you can see we are using the load more function passed as a prop, and that's what triggers the pagination. 
So this is uh, the, the power of uh, Vulcan, you know, all these things that are pretty costly to, to develop yourself, like data loading, pagination, and so on, they all come uh, working out of the box. So let's move on. What's next? User accounts. Right, because we do want to be able to insert or edit movies, right? So let's... Um, actually, I think we can just add this user accounts. Right here, and uh, components.accounts.login form is part of the accounts package, so it already exists. You don't really have to do anything. And yep, so I'm already signed in, but I'm going to sign out just to show you again. Uh, it works. So we are now logged in. So we can now think about how to add and edit movies. Probably going to be the next step. Yeah, mutation. So a mutation is uh, you know how you actually modify a document. It's a function that typically does one of three things: uh, either insert a new document, modify an existing document, or delete a document. And uh, we'll start with the one that creates a new document. So movies, new file, mutations, paste this. Um, so what do we have here? We have uh, this new mutation, three properties, a name, ch a check function. So this is used to tell if the current user can perform the mutation or not. It's useful uh, for two reasons. First, uh, on the server, obviously you want to check that you know the user has the, the right permissions. And then on the client, sometimes it's useful too, because for example, before you show the, the new uh, movie's form, you want to make the same check, right? Even though the operation would fail on the server, uh, there's no sense in showing the form if the user can't uh, perform that operation. So it's just for a, a user experience uh, perspective, it's good to use the same checks on both client and server and having that separate check function lets you do just that. And finally, the mutation, that's the actual uh, part that performs the operation. And here is calling a, a helper we have a pretty fine in Vulkan called new mutation. Um, you could also just write uh, a Mongo operation yourself, such as insert. We have our mutations. Let's import them just like we did with our schema and resolvers. Mutations mutations okay so um, that check function I mentioned checks uh, for the presence of an action so we'll need to define that oh, just forgot uh, an s right there okay permissions JS What's going on here? Uh, we have this new actions, uh, member actions array, which contains just one action, movies.new. And we are saying that members, in other words, uh, logged in users, can perform that action. Uh, again, let's, let's add it to our collection. And so when we check this, users can do user movies.new. It will return true if the user is logged in and false if they are not. Okay, that's important. Uh, by default, all schema fields are locked down, meaning we, we can't modify them from the client. Uh, so we're gonna modify our schema to, to um, accept some operations. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Okay, um, so the interesting part here is we've defined some uh, permissions uh, for who can view, insert, and edit our fields. Um, so who can view uh, anybody? Basically, basically guests are just uh, anonymous users. 
insertable by. So this is who can insert, and only members can uh, insert a document. And we will also define editable by, uh, even though we don't have an edit mutation yet. And we're also saying any member can edit a document. Now, of course, you probably want to restrict who can edit a document to the owner of the document. Uh, and we'll see how to do that later on. But for now, uh, we can move on and set up our forms so we can actually uh, add a new movie. So um, create a new movies new form. Okay, let's put it in our movies component directory. What's going on here? Well, uh, we are using that check function I talked about earlier to check if the current user can create a new movie. Uh, in other words, it just checks if the user is logged in or not. And then if, if they are, uh, we have this form here. We're passing it two properties, the collection in which to create a new document and the, the fragment that will uh, define which fields we get in return. So, you know, once we uh, have created that new movie, once it's inserted in the database, uh, we want to return it to the client so we can uh, insert it in our client store. Okay, um, for now, let's just add this to the top of our movies list um, component. Movies new form, okay. And we'll put it, uh, I, I guess, right here. Okay, let's reload. And we have our new form. What's really cool with Vulkan is the form is actually generated from the schema. So based on this uh, insertable by property, it knows whether you as the current user can insert a new document and also which fields you can insert. So it knows you, you have permission to insert a name, year, and review. So let's try out our form. Yep, it works. It got inserted properly. Cool. So we've done all this. Uh, now let's see if we can edit a movie. So again, we'll create a new form component. Um, here, new file, movies, edit form. What do we have here this time? Uh, we're passing a couple more uh, properties, so we still have collection and the fragment. We also have a document ID, which is the ID of the document we want to uh, edit, and that's how the form knows if this is a, doc a new document form or an edit document form based on the presence of this prop. Show remove is uh, an option to indicate if we want to show a, a delete document, remove document uh, action. And then success callback is what should happen on success and we're going to call a uh, close model this because this will be displayed inside a model window inside a pop-up in other words so uh, let's go back to movies item and make use of our form I'm just going to copy and paste this chunk of code so we're, we're adding this section right here we have, uh, first, again, we are checking um, our mutations check. Uh, we ha haven't actually written our edit mutation yet, but we'll do that in a second. And if the user can edit the current document, well, we show uh, a link that opens a model window using the, the pre-made uh, model trigger component. And then, uh, yeah, we are importing the form we just created. So let's save this and uh, let's create the mutation. Let's hook up our edit and remove mutation. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. So we already had new, now we have edit again with a check this time. If there is no user or no document uh, return false, otherwise, check if the user owns the document. 
uh, if they if they do, we check if they can perform the movie's edit own operation, and if they can, don't own, we check if they can perform the movie's edit all operation. Um, what this will mean is that basically we'll have these two actions. Uh, movies edit own will be assigned to every user and movies edit all just to admins. Uh, so let's do this right now. And um, although it's not in the tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and do the same for admins. Remove all. And there we go. So this way we have a really simple uh, admin system. Uh, let me finish on the mutation. So the mutation itself, uh, what's going on here, we have uh, our document. So first we, we find the document uh, that needs to be edited. We check if the current user can perform uh, the operation. This should actually be this dot check. And uh, if, if this doesn't throw an error, then we go ahead and we perform the edit mutation, uh, passing uh, a range of properties. Um, let's see. OK, um, do we need to do anything else? Nope, you should now be able to edit and remove movies. So let's see if that's true. Uh, you can see that the one movie that I've actually created with this user account does have an edit movie link. And when I click it, the pop-up does show up, but the, the form is blank. So let's see why. So if we go to our network tab, um, and um, let me clear, clear this out and then perform the operation again, you can see the message cannot query field undefined on type query. And looking at the headers and the operation we sent, we do see undefined here. And that's because I forgot to define a resolver for a single document. So, you know, here we are showing a list of documents, but when we click this, we want to load the data for one document. So uh, let me go ahead and do this right now. Um, right here should be a single resolver. Movie single resolver. Um, so I think it's going to be document ID and we'll return dot movies dot find uh, one and pass the document ID. Uh, let's see if. Uh, of course, we need the context as the last argument. So uh, let's see if this works any better. And yep, okay, a little bit of uh, ad hoc debugging there. Uh, it wasn't scripted, but at least it works. And let's see if we can edit. And yeah, we can. So um, the last part of the tutorial is sorting because right now our movies just uh, are displayed randomly. Uh, so let's see how we can sort them by uh, year. To do this, create the parameters JS file. So right here. So uh, what this will do is whenever um, we query for uh, data, and uh, we send this uh, terms object that we have, it will go through uh, a set of callbacks. And here, uh, by adding this function to movies.parameters, we can add this code to the callback so that the selector uh, that we ultimately get um, is actually kept the same, but the options object will be extended with uh, a sort based on the year. Um, it's all explained in the documentation in case this uh, doesn't make sense to you. Okay, um, let's load this up. And 
as you can see, uh, our movies are now ordered by year descending. What's really cool is that this uh, sort works both on the client and server. So not sure when this came out, but let's say 1992. Um, it should appear right between these two. And yep, there we go. It knows where it should pop in at. And that's about it for uh, this tutorial. So uh, let's review all that we uh, learned today. We learned how to, uh, first of all, create a collection, uh, give it a schema. That schema will then be transformed into a GraphQL schema. We learn how to load that GraphQL data, how to paginate it, how to insert uh, new documents, how to edit them, also how to sign in, sign out. So altogether, not a, not a bad day, um, especially in just a, under an hour. So you can, of course, do much more with Vulkan, but this is uh, really the, the basics of how you deal with uh, Vulkan's data layer, forms, and, and so on. So I hope uh, you, you enjoyed this short tutorial. I encourage you to check out the move, uh, sorry, the Instagram tutorial next, which is uh, right here, which also has a video walkthrough. And, um, and yeah, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come by our Slack chat room at uh, slack.vulcanjs.org and we'll be happy to help you.